YouTube, boys and girls, children of all ages, the dope man himself proudly brings to you the dope show on YouTube. So, you know, this is only the greatest show of all space and time. Not only today in day society, but all space and time. So if you're watching this in 1953, and you remember me because I came back as a time traveler and took all the pre-code horror books, or if you're watching this in 20, you know, 27, and uh, you're in the future about five years, the year now is 2022, and we are traveling through all space and time on that magic comic book ride, baby. So today... You know, it's Happy Wednesday, it's Happy Wrestling Day, AEW comes on tonight, it is Happy Comic Book Day, I went by the store, the comic book store, got me a few books out of my pool box, my pool box is looking kind of slim lately, um, things I got in my pool box is like, uh, Something's Killing the Children, and, uh, Devil's Highway, and, uh, I had a silver chair, oh shit, Silver Coin 13 was in there, uh, the Peach Momoko Predator cover was in there, uh, stuff like that, you know, I don't really show many modern books, but that's what I've been reading here lately, and I got a little stash here to show you, and I got a big book, baby, I got a big book over here to show you too, so, uh, before we get started, let's give a couple shout outs, uh, Comic Crypt of Castle Hills, this dude, he collects all kinds of horror stuff, He's got a voice like a radio god. And I wish he was my dad. You know, I grew up with a deadbeat dad. Why couldn't I have had somebody cool like Comic Crip of Castle Hills? He'd have been a perfect dad. He's like a creepy, you know, cool basement guy. Kind of reminds you of, a, I don't know, cross between a Vincent Price and, a, a, I don't know, maybe Bill Cosby. He's a great guy, though. If you ain't scribed to, uh, you know, Comic Crypt of Castle Hills, go subscribe to him. He sounds like a radio voice. He's always reading books and doing reviews. And he's always got a creepy voice. And it's just a cool show. He likes a lot of creepy stuff. Also, another creepy guy. Brazar Brian's Comics. He's always into, like, Charleston. And he's got a creepy magazines and Golden Key. If you're not subscribed to, to old Brazar Brian's Comics, go subscribe to him. So, that's two people for today I'd like you to subscribe to. They're into the pre-code horror. They're into the 60s horror. Helping support, move that movement. Uh, the more we can all subscribe to each other and uh, get the word out, maybe people will start learning about pre-code horror. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what other announcements we got? Do we got any announcements? Not really. Let's just get to the books. And I got a nice book to show you I got in the mail. But uh, some of the stuff I picked up from a local comic book store Secrets of Sinister House number 18. A well-loved copy, but how can you pass up a cover like that? You know, some of these old horror books, they look better when they've been chomped on by beetles. And they got spider webs all on them. You don't want a 9.8 of this. You want like a 2.5 of this. You want a, a 1.8. You want something that the, the, the way it looks matches the theme of the book. And this thing's just creepy. So you want it to have a little bit of a yellow tint to it and look old and funky. So this is a Sinister House, Secrets of Sinister House number 18, Detour, Dead End. And if you walk up that trail and, you know, you deserve what you get. If you can't tell that that's no place to be, it's on you, brother. Whenever she's running out here kicking rocks, screaming like a demon sucking semen, it's on her fault. What the hell did I just say? Damn. A little weird but hey we're live we're going live damn it we're going live we can't can't edit that shit anyway we got a predator jungle tales and i don't know what this is but it's an old book by dark horse when i say old it's probably 89 2000 something like that 89 to 2000 that's a 10 year gap yeah <laughs> i'm sure it is somewhere between 89 and 2000 but anyway it's probably between 89 and 2000 and uh Jungle Tales. He's beating up lions. I imagine he's in here killing zebras and uh, mink rats and uh, pythons. I mean, who don't want to see the predator fighting zoo animals? I hope he ain't at the zoo. I hope he's somewhere like out in Africa. Because if he's at the zoo, that's kind of weak. He's just going around from cage to cage just beating the shit out of panda bears and mink rats and chopping off giraffes' heads. I don't know. But this is Jungle Tales. I ain't looked at it yet, so... Hopefully he's in the jungle. 
and not the Nashville Zoo. Anyway, we got Ghost. Uh, That's a 35 center number. 55. We got some German guys up here with a Gatling gun, and they're just taking out people left and right. And you can see the ghost exiting their body, and they're coming back to get the German guys. So, German guys over here, they probably smell like kraut and weenies, and they're just chopping down everybody. So, this is uh, True Tales of the Weird and Supernatural. Uh, village of the Vigil Saints. Oh, sorry. Not Vigil Saints. I think that's Vengeful Spirits. I think I've drunk a little too much Paps Blue Ribbon today before I did the show. Maybe, because I'm doing a bunch of tongue twisters and saying shit that don't make any sense, but that's just a normal dope comics review. So, maybe I ain't had anything to drink. Anyway, unexpected. 35 cents. 180. 180, we got this beast. And he's coming for you. And you got this good looking girl in the go-go boots. And I don't know who this artist is for all these DC books. It could be Neil. I don't know. But he's always drawing go-go boots. And he's always drawing mini skirts. This girl's been on about 12 covers already. And she gets her ass in all kinds of bad predicaments. So whatever you do, you don't want to hang out with this girl. She's always getting chased by sand zombies. Locked up in dungeons. She, she's just asking for it. She's like a cat with nine lives. This dude here's trying to save her, and guess what? She will be saved. He will be dead. Deader than a doorknob. That's what's going to happen to this guy. Green coat is deader than a doorknob. She's going to be kicking rocks and running like a fox. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Woo! And this book here, I showed on my IG account a couple days ago. People went wild because it was Alfred Hitchcock's birthday. But this is a badass cover. If you don't have this, this is Innovation. It's a three-part series. The third issue is the hardest one to get. Two is the coolest cover. It's a beautiful book. Pretty hard to find. And I don't know how many times this has happened to me. I'd be looking for a book for two or three years out in the wild, and I'll find one. And then as soon as you find one, pow, you find another one. That's the way it happens. That's comic karma. Woo, comic karma. That's what happens. You find one, and there's another one right there. Or you could look six years and won't find any. Or you'll see a stack of them and pass on them, then you won't find another for five years. All that is comic karma. So, we got two. Psycho! What is it that, uh, what is it that, oh, uh, ODGB used to always say? I get psycho Norman Bates. So, this is psycho. Good book. That was a shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, shimmy, yay. All right, now to the big book. I'm so excited because this book, yeah, it's a pre-code horror book, but you know what's better than pre-code horror? Nice pre-code horror. It's better than bad pre-code horror, if there is such a thing as bad pre-code horror. But this book here has everything I like in it. This is Strange Suspense Stories, number three. And... What I hate about modern books like Avatar and some of these other production companies, they try to gore you out. I'm not interested in being gored out. If you look behind me, I like classic stuff like werewolves and Creature from the you know, Black Lagoon and Frankenstein and uh, Creepshow. And, you know, I love all the 80s and 90s Jasons and Freddies. I'm not into being gored out. You know, if a story calls for something to just be horrific and gory, I'm all for it. But you just can't make a whole movie or a whole comic book and a whole series, nothing but gore. It just kind of loses its effect. So this book is not too over-gored. Over-gored. I don't know if I've ever used that in a sense, but it's not too over-gored, which I like. And it's just a beautiful, weird book. This book, if it's not on your uh, want list, it will be when I show it to you. Because if you're into pre-code horror, how can you not like Strange Suspense Stories number three? Check that out. That is nothing more than badass. It's got everything I want. You got this dude decapitated back here. But notice the way the blood is kind of blended in with the shirt. It's not just covered in blood because they probably couldn't get away with that back in the day. So they made like the shirt just 
fade from a red to a pink. It's not too much. I love this. It shows the era and the time. You got the 70s, you know, the 50s, the 60s, the 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 70s poof. You know, that's a hairstyle from the 50s to the 70s. You got the turtleneck on, which was for 50s, you know. She's got the old Sears catalog bra that's pointed, you know, with, with cotton two inches thick. I mean, she is a Betty from the 50s. She's hot, but she's a Betty. That's what you call a hot girls from the 50s. Your grandmas were called Bettys, but she's she's a Betty. This dude here has lost his head over. You know, he's dressed like somebody would be in the band Weezer. He's got his tight pants on. He's got his Chuck Taylors. He's running, and he is missing a head. Does it get any better than this? I don't think so, brother. This is the book. I'm going to tell you one more time. Strange Suspense Stories, number three. This book, I don't know what it goes for because these things don't sell that often, but it is undervalued. Whenever you think about all the classic horror covers, this ought to be up there. This is the stuff. And if I get another chance to buy Strange Suspense Stories 3, I'll buy another one. Because I love this book. It's probably in my top 10 pre-code horror of all time. Just because I love it. So, there you go. This magazine is alive. Feel the plus beat of every page quivering with breath-stopping suspense. But he lost his head. There you go. What else can I say about that? Here we are again. Under 12 minutes. Another show down the drain. I think that's about 73. We're getting close to that 75 spot. I think we got 249 subscribers. We're one away from the big 250. So if you ain't subscribed, subscribe today. Pass the word along. Make some pre-code horror. Share my pre-code horror. Make some pre-code horror videos. Tag me in them. I'll check them out. Let's get the pre-code horror movement going. Let's pass the word. Subscribe today. Like, ring the bell. Leave a comment. You know, I love talking to you guys. Let's talk about anything. I always see the same old guys in my, my chat. A couple of y'all always do a good job of leaving comments. I like talking to y'all. And uh, until next time, I will see you again beneath a blackened sky.